For Bro Sean Johnson, be the Bears RB1, Sports Talk Chicago. Here with John's Glow. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. Hit that like button as well. We put up Bears content daily. Find us anywhere on podcast at Sports Talk Chicago and on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Sports Talk Chicago, we're presented by our good friends at Amish Country Farms. For the best Amish food in all of Chicagoland, hit them up today in Orland Park. So really, could Roshan Johnson be the guy for the Bears? A late-round pick, a guy nobody really talked about, a guy nobody really even knew about until the Bears took him. Well, according to new reports, he has, quote-unquote, upside to being the RB1 in 2023, which we said two weeks ago on this program, by the way. This is not a surprising report to me. But it's very encouraging, and I'm excited to see it. According to ESPN's Matt Miller, here's what he had to say on ESPN the other day. He's a do-it-all running back with awesome special teams ability and leadership skills, and he could end up being the lead ball carrier. The Bears have Deontay Foreman and Quill Herbert, but a team source told me after the draft that the former Texas backup has the upside to end up as Chicago's featured back. So this is a team source, somebody inside the Bears organization, Presumably somebody who knows what's going on personnel-wise, somebody who maybe had a hand in drafting Roshan Johnson, is now saying he could be the team's lead back week one. This is news, and this is bigger news than everybody else wants to talk about. We were speculating two weeks ago when this pick came in as to what the Bears would do at the running back position. They have Herbert, who's the incumbent, but who really can't block at all. And can't really catch the football. There's Deontay Foreman, who's coming in after a pretty good year, filling in for Carolina and their needs after trading away Christian McCaffrey. And now there's Roshan Johnson, three-headed monster at running back for the Bears. What do they do? How do they approach this situation? Well, we know Khalil Herbert isn't making big bucks. Still on his rookie deal, same with Rojo. And then Deontay Foreman came in. Not too much money. The Bears paid for him, but he is a free agent signing. So you would figure he's going to get some sort of opportunity to play, at least at first, Foreman. Free agent signing, comes in from Carolina, had a really good year to his credit. And Carolina tanked last year, had so many issues on and off the field, and yet Foreman put up almost 1,000 yards like it was nothing. So you would think he's going to get some sort of opportunity week one. Foreman's a more complete running back, but he's not the answer long term. Last year, you could argue, was an anomaly for Foreman. He's never been a household name. He's never been impressive. He's never been a top prospect or anything. He's just kind of been there throughout his career. Roshan Johnson is a fresh set of legs, going to be a rookie, did not cost the Bears a lot of money, and has so much upside. You look at Roshan's stats in college, and this is the one number that sticks out to me. We don't need to look at totals because he was technically the backup, but you could look at yards per carry, 5.6 in his career, 6.0 last season. Only 93 rushes last year, 554 yards, a 6.0 average, plus 128 receiving yards. 9.1 yards per catch. I mean, we're talking about wide receiver one, wide receiver two type numbers, 9.1 yards per catch. You think he's a wide receiver looking at that number. His range stats are off the charts. He's a young gun with a lot to prove, drafted late. Day two, day three. He has a legitimate opportunity to start game one, to start for the rest of this season, to even become the Bears feature back for the next couple of seasons. It's very much possible, and it's within reach and within range for him. And this report confirms it. And that's why this is news. This was speculated about the minute the Bears drafted him. Same day, we thought, okay, who is Roshan Johnson? That was everybody's question, because if you're telling me you knew Roshan Johnson beforehand, you must have been a Texas Longhorns fan and a diehard one at that because he was the backup. So who is Roshan Johnson, and what could he bring to the table for the Bears? And it turns out he could be the starter. Up talent on paper, some justification with statistics. And a glowing review from one of his former head coaches that appeared on Chicago Land Radio. And everybody was all of a sudden on the Roshan Johnson hype train. And I think there's reason to be excited and there's a reason to be a part of that hype train moving forward now. Team sources are suggesting this, not just random NFL GMs or scouts or people outside the building, people inside the building today believe Roshan Johnson 
has the upside, has the ability to be the starting guy. So you better believe the Bears are going to give him a legitimate opportunity to win the job. Johnson was taken at 115. The article goes on to finish saying, while Johnson will start his rookie season as the third running back on the depth chart, he could quickly ascend to that RB1 role for Chicago. Last week, a report came out from the Bears special teams coach that I guess after rookie minicamp, Roshan was in the locker room cleaning up, telling guys what to do. He's apparently a born and natural leader. He's a physical runner, pass-catching threat, and he's a leader. Also knows how to block, too, by the way, which is something Khalil Herbert still, for some reason, has not figured out as an NFL running back. This is not to say I want to trash Khalil Herbert or make fun of his abilities because he is certainly a talented player and he knows how to gain yards quick. He's averaging for his career over five yards per carry in the NFL. That's impressive. But you need to do more, which I know it sounds crazy now, but you need to do more running back than just run the football. 30, 40 years ago, maybe not, and the position says running back, but you need to be able to block and protect your QB at times when you're called to do so. You certainly need to catch the football. If you can't do that today, you're pretty much useless in the NFL. There are no more I'm going to run for 300 attempts per season, never catch the football, and just pound the ball down their throats. It's not going to happen anymore. Very few, if any, running backs do it. The only one who does is Derrick Henry. That's it. Out of everybody in football, the only one left who's doing that model is Derrick Henry. It's because the Titans need Henry to win. If they didn't have him, the Titans would be a 5-12 and 12 team. Because Ryan Tannehill ain't getting it done. You need to be multifaceted in order to survive in the NFL. You need to be able to know how to do multiple things well, not just, I know how to run the football, I'm going to play every day. It doesn't work that way anymore. And quickly, I'm realizing that's why the Bears kind of drafted him. They knew what they were getting. They knew they were getting a multidimensional running back, somebody who could easily and smartly replace David Montgomery. The Bears did good here. And what's today? May? Mid-May? We're talking about Roshan Johnson being the starting running back for the Bears. In 2023, it's May. Keep tabs on this story, and we will, of course, for you. But keep tabs on this. I firmly believe, maybe not week one, because, again, they have to give Foreman reps because they signed him to big money and Herbert's the incumbent. But by week four, week five, week six, I would not be surprised if it's the Rojo show the rest of the way. That would not surprise me. Roshan deserves it based on so many factors, multidimensional player, younger, cheaper, ready to grind, leader, ready to put in work. He's going to have to earn it. That's what training camp's for. But assuming things go well, assuming nothing weird happens or he doesn't forsake those leadership abilities and those hardworking abilities, I would be stunned if he's not starting by week six. If this is all true. And the key to all this is, who's the source? Not a scout, not a GM, not some panelist on your favorite TV show. A Bears source, a team source. Somebody inside the Bears organization said he has upside to being the Bears' starting running back. And to me, it's enough to say this is a serious report. We better start understanding what Roshan Johnson will mean to this team now. Because he may end up being the starter. And that's a bit of praise I have for the Bears, whether it's Ryan Pace or now potentially Ryan Poles. They do such a great job at drafting on day two and day three. I don't understand why they always miss it, usually, not maybe this year, but usually on day one. They always whip in the first round, but they find this fifth-round gem every single year, and it's impressive, and it's a compliment to them. Darnell Mooney, David Montgomery, second-rounder, Roshan Johnson, pick 115. Every year they find a diamond in the rough late, so obviously they have a good enough scouting department to identify talent late, but for some reason, they just can't get that round one pick right. Hopefully this year that'll be the case, but 
I always find it interesting, no matter who the GM is, no matter what the situation is, if it's a fifth rounder or later, fourth rounder or later, the Bears somehow hit gold. <laughs> Don't understand that one. But this is exciting and encouraging, and if you're a Bears fan, you should be hyped for this. It's not just going to be the Justin Fields show in 2023. Of course, all the focus is going to be on him, and rightfully so, but there are going to be other storylines we're going to have to watch. Who's the starting running back going to be? How will these wide receivers mesh as a unit, and will they help Justin Fields? Will this offensive line be better? Another big question. Will the Bears have an edge rusher by week one at all? There are serious questions for this team. It doesn't all revolve around Justin Fields. There are other areas on this team that need to develop and see improvement. Running back's going to be one of them because, hey, you don't have David Montgomery anymore. You have to find a way to adapt and be better on the fly. And fortunately for the Bears, now they have three guys who are going to be put in this situation to do it. Other teams don't have that luxury all the time. So I'm pretty grateful and appreciative to Ryan Poles for having some foresight on this. I'm not thrilled that they parted ways with Montgomery. Not too too happy about it at all, but at the end of the day, they found ways to replace him. Three guys. And I really believe Rojo is going to end up running away with this one, no pun intended. I think he's going to be the guy. I think it just makes sense. So many factors go into it, into why it makes sense. And I'm just excited to see the competition part of it. They better have a real competition. And I'm walking in expecting them to play Deontay Foreman and play Khalil Herbert week one. I really am. It's like the whole Bryce Young thing, right? Like, oh, Bryce Young's our guy, but we got to play Andy Dalton first. You have to do it to appease the veteran that you signed. It's stupid. It's dumb. It's old school. It's Stone Age football, but they're going to do it. We all know it. If they did it for Andy Dalton, the mayor's going to do it for Deontay Foreman and Khalil Herbert. But eventually, Roshan will get his opportunity. It's going to be by week five, week six, in my opinion. And I know, based on all this information now in May, with team officials anonymously commenting, saying he's going to be the guy, that he will be starting for this team in 2023. Thanks for watching today's program here on Sports Talk Chicago. Appreciate all of you tuning in. Big thank you to John Meadows, directing and producing our sponsor, Amish Country Farms in Orland Park, and all of you. Subscribe to the channel. We do Bears videos daily right here on Sports Talk Chicago. And approaching 20,000 subscribers, we could use your help. Also find us on every podcast platform and on social media at Sports Talk Chicago. So long, everyone.